Yes, perfect. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, yeah, so we have actually two golems in this, uh, uh, which are unrelated, but I think, you know, uh, uh, in different and probably uh, exciting um, in different ways. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm presenting this, uh, this collaborative work. I'm, I'm, I'm the, the, the only person here. Uh, my, my colleagues are more responsible for technical um, matters um, uh, couldn't attend, but uh, yeah, I'll do my best. So uh, let me start like, with, uh, you know, pushing this golem thing farther. So uh, um, uh, we uh, actually, the, the basis for the project is this like, kind of simple idea that, you know, the infrastructure empowers researchers. So in this way that we kind of start with think thinking that, you know, um, in DH we have a group of, you know, really advanced researchers doing uh, advanced stuff, programming, new methods, etc. But we also want to kind of um, uh, empower the researchers, you know, doing like more disciplinary stuff, just humanities researchers who not exactly uh, know their way around uh, um, uh, programming and stuff. So we want to, to provide them with some tools for, um, uh, for to, to do uh, uh, digital work. So this was like this initial, one of the initial uh, kind of founding ideas behind um, our project, um, and it should be yeah, uh, highlighted that it's a part of Daria Lab, so this like three-year uh, big th project uh, um, currently uh, on the way in, uh, in Poland, just building this sort of infrastructure. So uh, the challenge we, we have starting with, uh, with this work was to, uh, um, uh, to, to, to build a tool which would on one hand respond to, you know, to the criticism which was you know, widely discussed last, uh, in last uh, years uh, concerning uh, computational literary studies. So you know, the question of whether you know, the methods are transparent enough, the corpora not available, so um, the problem of reproducibility of results, etc. So uh, uh, we want to address it by creating, you know, first of all, like well-documented and accessible corpus, well-documented, uh, customiz customizable uh, set of tools, and uh, um, some workflows allowing for iterative work with this corpus or corpora and uh, uh, tools, uh, and also standardized outputs of this uh, operation, so, you know, you can take the output to your favorite uh, other analytical visualization tool and work on it further, and low threshold tool, so basically that to enable uh, researchers to actually um, engage with, uh, without much of the previous uh, knowledge. So we started with uh, research questions, of course. So, so if we want to build the tool, uh, we, uh, we wanted to have a mock-up you know, of uh, what kind of answers we can uh, provide. And we, we're focusing uh, as, a, as a part of uh, is, inter is related to, to, to other uh, parts of the infrastructure we're building in the project, but we're focused on uh, literary studies, so basically literary discourse. So we want to analyze literary discourse and answer, I mean, be able to answer at least some of those questions, and I'm not going to into great detail with them, but, you know, for instance, uh, how we can um, uh, show the reception of a given author, how it evolved uh, on the basis of the corpus, or how we can map the terminology of how concepts change their meaning over time uh, within the field of uh, literary studies or be it in different discipline, uh, how the word usage changes, how topics uh, uh, change, you know, and etc. So basically, this kind of robust idea of, of, of looking at uh, literary history and kind of trying to, to measure as much as we uh, can. Um, so Golem builds actually of, uh, on LEM, <laughs> which was a literary exploration machine. Actually, we uh, had also the privilege of presenting it in uh, Montreal, in DH, which was like uh, a century ago almost. And uh, um, so this, was, this is like an, another tool, but um, it's less disciplinary focused, uh, so it's, it's, it's basically like a general tool you, you can use it for, for, for Polish uh, uh, text to, to do some basic operations, lemmatizing, uh, basic stats, etc. Uh, but it's not so well documented. Uh, there's no option to work with your metadata in this tool. Um, and uh, limited size of files, etc. So, so there were like some, uh, some, uh, some aspects we just basically left aside and moved forward to Golem. So these are new uh, solutions. So as you see, um, Golem is actually uh, uh, consisting of, of like kind of three overlapping uh, um, elements. So we first we want to Golem to work with uh, an identity and relationship analysis within the uh, corpus. Secondly, we have terminology mining components. So just to discover 
uh, the concepts uh, and then analyze them, how they, they change within the corpus. And finally, topic modeling uh, components to, you know, to extract uh, um, uh, uh, those groups of words and then sit for further, further analysis. And I just basically will walk you through, uh, through those components, like starting though with uh, data. So that's important, as we said, we wanted to have a well-documented corpus, so this is like the first part of our work. We are creating a, a corpus of literary studies of Polish literature for past 200 years, a kind of ambitious. But uh, so we basically focus on uh, groups of anthologies, writings by eminent scholars, journals, and monographs. These are our kind of subcorpora. Uh, and yeah, there's an elaborated basis for selection. I can return to it if, uh, if needed, but no, we will not uh, waste time on it right now. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight is uh, the small screen, which is how, uh, this is the better version of, of Golem, how it looks, but just you see that there's metadata, so this is, the, this is like the crucial thing for us that we can already, within the tool, we can sort or filter the corpus, so if you want to look at specific year, then we will be also adding genre or uh, of writing or whether it's journal article, etc. or just look at uh, compare authors or something like this, it's uh, possible on the basis of the metadata um, in, the, uh, in the system. And uh, what I'll be showing today, some examples are based on, on our anthology. Uh, corpus, so 1,000 texts from 24 anthologies. There's like this historical uh, overview of it. So um, the most developed part of it right now is the first one for the entities uh, detection. So uh, what we started uh, uh, with was to create this sort of ontology of, uh, of, 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 of like, like literary um, uh, system of literary studies. So we worked first with, uh, mm, with uh, mm, uh, named entity recognition documentation from uh, Claring PL, which provides us with uh, their uh, uh, tools. And we kind of built on this some you know, literary entities or looking at specifically literary uh, relations. So I mean, we uh, focus, for instance, that we, we are sure that we have a relationship of, you know, of translation, collaboration, um, public, published by or uh, writes about something or somebody uh, and uh, that the book is about someone, etc., etc. So we built this sort of, uh, uh, this sort of um, uh, ontology. Then, and of course it's, oh, it's not that, but you just, there's a kind of mock-up of one of the uh, uh, just Kovadis uh, uh, by Henryk Sienkiewicz and just we can see how uh, it's interrelated with uh, translators, uh, reviewers, writers, et cetera, et cetera. So that's like how it works in practice. Uh, so what we're doing right now, we're just annotating texts to, uh, to, 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 to train the, the model to, uh, to uncover those uh, entities and uh, relationships. And these are some early results. Uh, so with relationships, it's pretty tough right now, but uh, these are, for instance, the uh, uh, authors uh, Mm, mentioned in the in our corpus of anthologies, and uh, what uh, should be stressed is that uh, uh, all the results are available like in the standard formats, so you can again take them to Gethi as in this example or two. Uh, we also want to have the compatibility with uh, graph uh, databases, so uh, so it's easy to, uh, to 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 use it in uh, um, uh, in uh, yeah, like for instance in Neo 4 J for. Uh, for that matter. Okay, I'm just speeding up a bit. Uh, so uh, the terminology extraction, and here are uh, just two things to, uh, uh, to, 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 to focus on. So uh, first of all, we do like this the general terminology, uh, terminology extraction. There's a tool, uh, ThermoPL uh, by uh, Polish Claring that uh, kind of uncovers uh, concepts, uh, try to terms, try to lemmatize them, and um, give some uh, basic stats on it. However, we're now focusing on implementing the context uh, package, this is R package, which allows for a bit more elaborated comparison of how the text, uh, how the, the meaning uh, of the word would uh, change over uh, time. And uh, I'm speeding up uh, right now, uh, but I'm almost there. So the uh, topic modeling component, uh, so the tool will allow, first of all, for like just basic uh, LDA, but what's important, we want to allow also uh, uh, users to, uh, to use the, to, to uh, mm, uh, choose what the topics should be built on. So in this case, 
for instance, this is a control li controlled list of literary terms, so you can just uh, go through topics based on terms. And uh, what's important for us is also to have a nice visualizations. Oh, and it's just wanted to click it. Uh, okay, but you don't see it. So, so just the last thing to show, perhaps, is that uh, uh, you can also browse those topics. Uh, this is a, it's still a mock-up, but uh, um, kind of uh, look at them uh, uh, you know, on kind of interactive uh, uh, visualization just to, 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 to analyze them, and then you can change them. You can change the parameters, filter the corpus, etc. Um, okay, so how I just get rid of it, yes, perfect. Um, yeah, and that thing, that's, uh, that's more or less it. The work is ongoing and uh, uh, yeah, be happy to answer any questions or just get more in depth about some issues I, I discussed. Thank you.